Expect to hear some new terms at the games, including top rocking, go downs, and freezes. They're all elements of break dancing or breaking, which debuts at this year's Olympics. To talk more about the newest Olympic sport of breaking, I'm joined now by Jeff Chang, who has written extensively on hip hop. Thank you so much for joining us from California. Thanks for having me. Well, Jeff, what has the reception been so far to breaking at the games? You still have a lot of people who didn't realize that it had been added to Paris 2024. Yeah, I, well, I think, you know, that there's a lot of excitement amongst the worldwide communities that have been supporting breaking for the last 50 years. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be something that will take everybody by surprise. You know, it's not one of the featured um, sports like gymnastics or track and field or swimming, um, but it's exciting and it's youthful and it's energetic. And I think that people are going to really love it when they see it. Well, what was the process for getting breaking into the games and how long did that take? Well, you know, this is a dance that goes back 50 years. And like you've heard the breakers say, like Victor's saying, uh, it's evolved. It's, it's, it's not a dance like the cha-cha. Uh, it's continued to evolve, right? And so it becomes a sport really over the last five or 10 years uh, when you have uh, folks who are in the dance sports uh, arena trying to push it. Uh, as a sport into the Olympics. And so in 2018 in Buenos Aires uh, at the Youth Olympics, it made its debut. It was an incredible exhibition. And uh, I think that, plus the fact that France had already had a huge infrastructure built up around breaking, uh, lent itself to make the decision to add breaking to the, to, to the Olympics this year. For many Olympic sports, as we heard and as we know that there is a lot of time and cost involved, there's the training, there's the competitions. Um, how does breaking compare, especially when it doesn't really require a lot of startup costs? And, you know, also it's it's pretty subjective. I mean, for people watching this at home, it's it's fun, it's entertaining. But then how do judges look at this and decide who gets the gold? Great questions. The you know, the dance really started, you know, on the street. Literally, literally the kids could do it themselves on the playground with their with their boombox. Um, then you kind of move it into the nightclubs and into the community centers. And the crowds are the folks who are affirming who the winner is going to be. Uh, by the 1990s, you start really seeing global contests starting up. And so there's much more of a formalization of the rules of uh, breaking and the judging of breaking. Uh, for this particular uh, uh, contest, for the Olympics, there's been a real concerted effort to try to take the hip hop aesthetic of mind, body, and soul, and to actually put that into uh, a system so that the scores actually appear in real time after the contest. Uh, and there's a number of different, there's six different categories uh, that, that folks are judging on uh, that basically represent what people love about the dance. It's improvisation, uh, it's spark, the surprise, the techniques, um, the power that's involved, uh, the personality and the charisma of the dancers. We heard from uh, Team USA's favorite, uh, Victor Montalvo. Any other stars to watch in this competition? I think Victor and B-Girl Sunny are, are both favorites uh, to win. You should look at the J Japanese women, uh, Ami and Ayumi. And also uh, Phil the Wizard from Canada and Shiga Kicks from Japan. They're going to be tearing it up on the dance floor. And Jeff, we know that part of sports is also sponsorships, uh, the money involved. Are there any key brands or celebrities that are sponsoring this event, event following some of the athletes, helping them in this endeavor? I think the brand that's most associated with breaking is Red Bull, which has sponsored contests now for uh, over a decade. Um, but it's really interesting now to see Mercedes-Benz, Accenture, Google, uh, Delta Airlines, Comcast and Xfinity all coming to the table to sponsor breakers. Um, it's a changing game. And I think that coming out of, uh, of Paris, we're going to see a lot more breakers sponsored um, at very high levels with very mature brands, not just youth-oriented brands. And Jeff, uh, you know, that being said, we know that as of now, it doesn't look like breaking will be part of L.A. 2028. But is there still a possibility that could happen? And what would it take for them uh, for breaking to appear on the roster for L.A.? I'm not really sure what the uh, rules are for actually getting uh, the sports approved for 2028. 
But what is clear is that the world championships are going to continue, uh, that there's a lot of global contests in which a lot more money is going to get poured in. And what we're already seeing on the grassroots level here in the U.S. is uh, a kind of um, rise of, of dance dads and dance moms and breaking really becoming something like uh, travel ball, like basketball camps or, or travel baseball. Uh, so breaking is here to stay. Uh, regardless of whether it's going to be there in Olympic, at the Olympics in Los Angeles in 2028 or not. All right, Jeff Chang from Berkeley, California. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate your insight.